What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at the Revol kit. Uh, this is the direct drive kit uh, coming out of China. Looks really, really promising. I uh, want to give you guys a quick heads up. We're going to spend probably the next five, six minutes, maybe even eight minutes, talking about um, the benefits, the features of this board, why I think it's better, why I think it's different from its competitors or its predecessors, like the Ivory or the Onan and the Landwheel, who are actually a part of this company or they've collaborated together to build this. So if you're not interested in seeing why I think it's better or taking it out of the box um, or mounting it on the board, you can skip forward now, probably about eight minutes I reckon. Uh, skip forward and that's where we'll do the first ride, uh, we'll do some speed tests and so on. So if you're not interested, skip now. Okay, so let's get started. Welcome back guys. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name's Scott Davies. I like to review, ride, pull apart, fix, uh, hopefully not break electric skateboards uh, and this one here I saw about a month ago two months ago now online I was super excited it's the Revo kit it's a direct drive uh, kit which you can bolt onto any skateboard almost any skateboard um, as long as it's around six inches thick six and a half inches it's going to go on without a problem straight away I want to talk about the differences to this board so as I mentioned really nice small box beautifully done in the box you get a charger two and a half amp you get the kit itself there's the kit the drive the power plant really nicely packaged by the way I know some people don't care some people do set of front trucks wheels all around uh, ABEC clone 74A so a nice soft sticky wheel you've also got the orangutan uh, pulleys if you want to put some orangutans on there or some boosted wheels that will go straight on that comes included in the kit all your hardware a um, riser pad for the front trucks you have your battery now there's two battery options that come with this you have the travel friendly battery which is 144 watt hours so it's under that magic 160 and then you have what they call their extended range this one is the extended range so 36 volt 6,000 milliamps, 216 watt hours. So that should give us around 18 kilometers range, hopefully. But we'll definitely put that to the test. Uh, you've got the floor charger, the wall charger, the remote, which is very, very different. We'll definitely talk about that remote when we're out riding. It's um, very similar to a couple of other ones out there, but this one just, it, I, I, don't, I don't know if I like it yet. Um, I'll decide when I'm riding to see how it feels, how it, how it, uh, how it, I guess, translates into movement. It feels nice in the hand though. A really nice mounting tool, because obviously you're gonna be taking this on and off different decks. Decks. And then you've got your standard skate tool. So I'm just gonna chuck the stuff we don't need back in the box straight away. So we don't need that. We don't need the orangutan pulleys. We need the riser pad. We need the bolts. We need everything else. We don't need the charger. I think I mentioned 2.5 amp power. Now, Firstly, and most importantly, let me just drag this around. This hub, this, this drive, this system, is designed in a way that it will not drop the battery. Now, I'm emphasizing that because it was a known ongoing issue with Onan, Ivory, um, the other one, I can't remember who it is now, that the batteries, if you hit a crack, or if you went over a few bumps, it would vibrate and fall out. Now that was that was predominantly because it was held on at the end here with a little clip, and at the front there with a little clip. And plastic on plastic, it moves, it stretches and so on, and it would just fall out. So you know, there was some hacks, um, I saw Andrew Penman had a great hack where you'd put a rubber band around it, and that worked, it worked great. But I, I always thought if you're spending that much money, you shouldn't have to put a rubber band around it, right, to, to get rid of the rattle. Now the way they've done this battery, is they've put a uh, an edge on it so down here you've got two things two uh, turrets let's call them with edges now these edges actually slide in the whole way along so your battery is not only locked in at the end it's locked in all the way along here and it's also locked in at the, at the front so when I slide that in there you need to actually get it in and then slide it and then click there you go that is not gonna fall out I am 99.99999% confident that will not fall out on any group rides or over any divots in the ground or massive, cor ma massive corrugations. Really, really nice design. Next point. Now I just want to pull up, this is the, 
Oh, God, that's heavy. This is the ivory, uh, ivory drive system. Now, I've got the four-wheel drive one of this, and I just don't use it. It's just too unreliable. Now, you'll see straight away, this is definitely a, fo a smaller footprint. Both 90mm wheels. These are direct drive. These are hub. So these are swappable. These are not swappable. Now, the, where this one gets really interesting is how they've thought about everything. I, I feel like they've thought about everything this one has done wrong. It's got this beautiful rubber membrane the whole way across. And it's got this... I want to show you closely. It's got this raised lip. Let's see if I can get that there. Bit of focus. Not on my face. There we go. So you can see that raised lip all the way around here. So when you bolt that onto the board, it's actually going to squash down. It's designed to squash down and create this, this beautiful, I guess, snug fit against the deck. And that's just, that's the biggest problem with that. This one here had nothing. It was just, oh God, that's heavy. It was just metal. And so I've had to put this foam on here. Again, that was another Andrew Pimmon hack. He's, he's very good with his hacks. But without that, it's just metal, solid, solid metal banging on the wood. And because it's flat, you have these massive big gaps where moisture can get in. Oh, I can't even get the battery off, to be honest. Nah. Okay, battery can't come off. I know there's a rubber band on there because, as you can see by the scratches, that one's fallen off mid-ride. It's the last thing you want when you have the battery fall out. That's just horrible. Right, so, beautiful thing. No extra foam needed, mount straight on the board. Two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. I've only got the two-wheel drive option. I would love to try the four-wheel drive option. Revival, if you're watching, I'd love to try the uh, four-wheel drive option. We're gonna mount it on this board. Um, we'll go into hyperlapse and do it, just because it's gonna be boring watching me do this for six minutes. Now, the remote control, really quickly. The remote control is I think absolutely beautiful. On here, you've got your remote battery and your board battery, current speed, current wheel size. So it says 90 mil in there. Hopefully you can just see that maybe. Now you can change this in um, one millimeter increments. So you can go 91, 92, 93, all the way up to 110 millimeter. So if you want to put some cloud wheels on this, if you want to put some orangutans, some 85s, you can also go down as low as 80, I believe. You can change it. So your telemetrics on here, your speedo and so on, are still correct. Uh, we've got four speed modes, odometer. It's telling me there in the corner, two WD, so we know it's in two wheel drive. So if you do buy this and you love it, and you want to reach out and then you want to change it to four wheel drive, you can just order an, an extra kit and this peers straight to it and you then become a, you then get a four wheel drive connected remote control. So really quickly, let's just talk it, look at speed mode one. Speed mode one, 17, and, uh, with no load. Speed mode two, Put my phone on silent, wait a second. There we go. Speed mode two is 25 without any load. So that's not bad. Speed mode three is 33 kilometers an hour without any load. And speed mode four, without any load. You can see that. Focus, focus, focus. 49 kilometers per hour without any load. So I reckon this will do, this will definitely do over 40. Now the brakes feel beautiful on this and you can adjust the brakes as well. So if you put it into, into the um, menu mode, you can adjust the brakes from 80, 90 to 100%, which is again, really, really nice. Now, this thing feels very, very responsive and very, very smooth. Very excited to ride it. All right guys, we're gonna mount this drive onto this deck here. Uh, and then when we come back, we'll grab a helmet, hit the roads and we'll see how this thing performs go through the speed modes and give you my first impressions. Great, talk soon. Welcome back to part two of the Revel unboxing. Really quickly before we ride, just a reminder, uh, this is the Revel bolt-on kit. Uh, I originally put it on a 38 inch deck, which you may have seen in the video just now. Um, I did a quick test ride and it get, was getting a massive wheel bite, there were no cutouts, so I've just changed it to this uh, constant 33 inch deck. Uh, a lot more fun, uh, it's got a nice, nice uh, 
It's got a nice uh, concave to it, so it'll be very smooth and easy to uh, handle. Just a reminder about the board, uh, two battery types, 144 and 216 watt hours, so one flight friendly, one not flight friendly. Uh, what else can we say? It's got dual, let's put this in the right way, dual uh, direct drives, looking at 1100 watts total power, so 550 watts per motor. Wow, okay, it's very, very quiet. It's been raining lots here, so I'm just gonna start off quite slowly until we get on the roads, because there's just debris everywhere, as you might be able to see running with the original 90 mil wheels just to see how it goes standard out of the box i can already tell you these things are very very they feel very similar to the um the new evolve wheels very sticky very smooth whisper quiet and again being direct drive there's none of that horrible rattle coming from the uh, hub motors at the back so we're going to cruise along here in first speed mode or one speed mode one that's going to see what we get top speed there is about 15 kilometers per hour. So nothing mind blowing. Enough speed to get you along the, the beach front if that's where you're going, where you need to be. Oh, so much crap on the path. Ugh. Oh, gross. If you haven't seen the news, we've just had massive storms here in Sydney massive storms biggest storms in 30 years to hit sydney uh the most water we had three months worth of waterfall in two days okay we are off the path now because they were just too covered in sand just... right we're in speed mode two now on a slight incline just to let you know we are sitting on 20 kilometers per hour hopefully you can see me okay it's 20 kilometers per hour 22 kilometers per hour so get along nicely now speed mode two is a really, really comfortable speed mode. It uh, has a really nice acceleration curve. And again, those uh, I'm running on 90% brakes, so the brakes are very, very, it's not gonna throw you off, but it stops you really nicely, which is uh, very satisfying, if that's a word to use for braking. Now, nothing I want to mention about this kit, when you bolt it on, there is nothing extra needed. It comes with long bolts, it comes with riser pads, it comes with everything you need. And as I showed you in the initial, in the unboxing, it has that rubber membrane on the kit, which just flattens out against the board and creates this, uh, this beautiful seal. So no additional bits and pieces needed from the hardware store or Clark rubber or buttons for longer bolts everything you need is in the box which is fantastic now bump it up to speed mode three now whoa okay a lot more acceleration uh sit on 30 kilometers per hour now that's 30 kph okay so 30 kilometers per hour in speed mode three which is pretty good I'm just gonna go around here, past this truck. Okay, let's just do a little bit of a sneak speed test. This isn't the video for the speed test, but we'll see how we go. We are on a bit of an uphill up here. Uh, let's just get around this corner. Okay, yeah, this is fast. 38. Oh, bit of a turn here. Oh, here we go. Right, let's bump it. Loads of wind. 38. 39, 40. Okay, that's got loads of speed, even on a hill. Loads of speed. Okay, I just want to show you this kit really quickly. I'm just going to set this tripod up. Hang right, a second. Hi. Right. Now, this kit... These motors are just, they're very, very quiet, very mechanical, very, very smooth. Um, the braking curve on these things is just really, really inspiring. Like, um, it's like Hobby Wing, but almost better, which I never thought I'd say that. Um, Hobby Wing for me have, in my opinion, 
the nicest um, standard brakes out there on the market. The VISC 6 is pretty good too, don't get me wrong. The VISC 6 is very good. And another thing I want to point out, there are no rattles whatsoever from this battery. Again, you may have seen in the previous half of the video, I was comparing this to the Ivory Board, or the Onan, or even the early Land Yachts. They all had a few, uh, a few rattles or a few issues. This one, thanks to that rubber membrane, has no sinister noises at all. No rattles, no bangs, no clonks. It's exactly what you want, what you expect, should I say, from these, um, these booster units. Now, I know I'm going to get lots of questions to say, is it better than Mellow? I'll tell you right now, I cannot comment. I've never owned a Mellow booster. I've never even tried one. If anyone in Sydney's got one, feel free to reach out. I'd love to try it and put it, do a comparison. Obviously, the Mellow, uh, the Mellow Boost is world famous, especially with the German quality. Be more than happy to, um, even if you've got one, bring it along. We'll film it together. You come along and ride yours, I'll ride mine. We can swap over. So, yeah, if, you, if you're going to ask the question, don't, because I won't be able to answer it. But I can tell you right now, this is the nicest booster I've ever ridden as far as smooth remote, smooth ESC, power is beautiful. Um, also the direct drives. Um, I have one other direct drive board and this is, these motors are better than that. The magnets are, as I said, smaller, stronger. Just have this beautiful um, feeling to it. Um, but also there's more clearance, which is really interesting. I think what they've done is I think the motors, the circumference of the direct drive motor is actually a little bit smaller which gives you more clearance on those 90 mil wheels because both have 90 mil, I think, or maybe even the other one has even, even has slightly bigger wheels. But I haven't knocked these motors once yet um, and I've been around the block a couple of times already. Okay guys, that brings us to the end of today's ride. Unfortunately, um, you may have seen on the video, we got rained out, started to pour down, uh, and I was about a K from the car, so it was a bit of a quick uh, dash to get back to the car. Um, listen, it's gonna rain for about the next week, so I think it's best we summarize the board now. You will, you will have seen some footage. I can tell you right now, after the first 10 kilometers, I am very confident to say, this is an extremely nice booster kit. Um, this is the nicest booster kit I've ever ridden. Uh, smooth, it's powerful, it's got very, very good speed. Uh, the trucks just feel very strong, uh, very confidence inspiring. You can carve really well and really just really push that back foot and, and turn. As I mentioned, the direct drives are a little bit smaller in a circumference than most. And so it gives you more wheel clearance. So like I, I went over a few cracks, a few bumps, a few uneven surfaces uh, that way, not that way if that makes sense uh, and i had no problems whatsoever no problems whatsoever um damaging the motors which is uh, a really nice sign i know with most direct drives you just smash them up on the very first ride which is really upsetting i mean they still work fine it's just the outer cover but it looks it looks like crap um remote connection had no issues at all perfect connection um acceleration curve as i mentioned was really nice no rattles there's not really much more i can say now what am I saying about this board? This is the best boosted system on the market. So again, I did say I haven't tried Mellow, so I can't comment, but dollars for value, I would really, really struggle to see Mellow beating this, uh, specifically in range, 
uh, acceleration curve build quality. The build quality in this is fantastic. And again, being that direct drive, you've got four real wheels all the way around. Um, four real wheels, real wheels, bleh. You know what I'm saying? You can, you're not, it's not, it's not in hub. So it's very, very smooth, very quiet. It's an absolute pleasure to ride. Uh, Revo booster kit, massive uh, two thumbs up, two thumbs up, two thumbs up for the kit. Very, very happy with it. Very surprised, um, I must say. I didn't think it would be as good as it is, especially for that price being, I think it's around 599 for two wheel drive. I'd be very, very excited to try the four wheel drive. Um, I think the power would just be incredible. Um, but for now, we've got the two wheel drive and I'm very, very impressed. It easily did 40 up, up a hill, easily. And with my weight being 100 kilos, it's very, very impressive. Um, yeah, let's end the video there, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked the content, if you want to see more, please like, subscribe, share, do whatever you want to do. Um, if you think I could do better, give me some feedback. Chuck it down below. Uh, if you don't like the way I film, the angles, whatever. If you want to know what camera I'm using, let me know. I've got some tech videos coming up soon. Uh, so we've got a digital, a new digital GoPro alternative we're going to be looking at, uh, along with um, some new microphone setups as well. So that'll be exciting. Uh, it is called Scott Davies Eastgate and Tech, and for the last 12 months, it's been predominantly Eastgate. So we have got some cool little tech things coming up as well, as long as uh, as well as the new GoPro Max 360 camera, we're going to take a close in-depth look at. Um, they've just done a firmware upgrade, which I think will make this a lot more usable and a lot more um, comparable to uh, the other market leader out there, being the Insta360 One X. Don't forget, guys. Please uh, always ride safe, wear a helmet, uh, and I will see you on the next video. Yeah, you told me the